Hi everyone, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its technical analysis. If you're new, welcome and if you're returning, welcome back. So let's get into the uh, fundamentals before we get into the technicals as fundamentals are really sentiment and risk sentiment is what drives the market. So <clears throat> What we've got in the upcoming week um, is going to be the U.S. We're publishing in publishing their inflation rate, retail sales, Michigan consumer sentiment, and jolt jobs openings. Um, why is what's really the most important really thing out of this is probably going to be inflation rate, um, and that's simply because you have um, the Federal Reserve um, potentially cutting interest rates if inflation is still below their target so this is the fed watch tool and basically what this does is um gives you the probabilities of a um a fed uh rate cut hold or hike probabilities of a chance according to you know the big financial institutions and where they're basically putting their uh, their money <clears throat> where the money's going so a 92, 91, 0.2% chance of an ease. Now, again, depending on um, what happens with inflation, this can potentially move up or down. If inflation is meeting targets, then there probably may not be a need for the Fed to uh, cut rates. But at the moment, it does look like there is going to be, um, you know, the chances of an ease are quite high. Um, what else have we got this week? So elsewhere, the European Central Bank will probably unveil its stimulus package on Thursday. That's going to be massive. Um, and the markets are really going to be looking at um, basically the level of stimulus. And they've got, I guess, uh, a certain, um, how do I put it? They've got a certain idea of how much QE or the stimulus package, the stimulus package is going to entail. And if it basically exceeds that, then I think the, the euro will probably end up selling off. If it underwhelms, then the euro may end up rallying. But um, I think the chances of um, you know the uh, the euro really this week um, decreasing in value um, is uh, probably higher on the cards. And remember that the European Central Bank actually want a weak currency to stimulate inflation. It, they're not doing it because they want a stronger currency. They're doing it because they want a weaker currency. So other important releases include UK monthly GDP. Um, while that's important, I think the main thing around the UK is going to be all about Brexit. Any kind of sentiment changes with uh, a deal Brexit or a no deal Brexit um, is really going to drive the markets. Trade balance and unemployment, again, fundamentals are pretty much, I think, out, out the window for now. Um, it's all about whether there's going to be a deal or no deal Brexit and the likelihood of a deal Brexit would probably drive the pound as what happened really like kind of like last week and the possibility of a no deal <clears throat> or the increasing chance of a no deal Brexit will, um, you know, uh, weaken the, uh, the the pound. So we've also got Eurozone, industrial production and trade balance, China foreign trade and inflation data. That's really important for, I guess, the uh, risk off and risk on trade when it comes to uh, the US and China trade war. Um, if China um, trade um, is, is going good and inflation is going good, then um, it should be more risk on than risk off, meaning that risk on currencies and the commodity currencies like the Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, New Zealand dollar will continue to do well as you know risk on kind of came into the market a little bit last week. And we'll see that in a, on the price charts and the Australia consumer and business morale um i guess that would be okay for australia so now let's get into the technicals and we start off on the dow jones dollar index um, as we do every week and the dow jones dollar index is just a measure of the us uh, dollar strength against um uh, uh, various other currencies like the euro the yen and the pound and the australian dollar so from last week we had pretty much prices come up into this higher supply zone um, it was already in here and then pretty much it's you know rejected from there and now come down into this uh, this demand zone 
So if you think that the US dollar potentially is going to get stronger and the US dollar did have some disappointing um, non-farm news, but what was um, actually quite good was the fact that they had uh, higher than expected average hourly earnings. So um, again, with all eyes on inflation, yes, uh, you've got eyes on jobs and GDP, but inflation is really what the Fed um, probably may be more focused on. And uh, with inflation potentially picking up, um, you could see, you know, basically prices, you know, react from here and go higher. And again, also with the European Central Bank potentially trying to weaken their currency, that may force the US dollar um, a bit higher anyway, as they kind of work in in opposite. So let's see uh, what the chart really, sh uh, pretty much the, our options. So at the moment, um, from a daily perspective, what you're probably looking at, this level has been touched several times though, so it is a bit weak where you got once, tw you know, twice, this is the third time, this is, I guess, okay. Um, well, actually, I should say, what I should say is, this is the start of really the, the, the demand zone, this is the first time, this is the second time, so this is okay for a decent buy, and you wouldn't necessarily buy the Dow Jones dollar index, what you'd be looking for is buy trades, there's confluence on any kind of dollar crosses, so if you see, um, uh, the dollar uh, index start to rally, then you want to you know basically take trades on the uh, dollar yen, dollar Swiss, dollar CAD, etc., and buy the dollar against those currencies. If you're waiting for basically a short trade on any of the dollar crosses, then you're waiting for basically a pullback into maybe a supply zone and then wait for confirmation uh, to get short around here. So the more times the level is touched, the weaker it becomes. I guess this is okay, you know, first time, second time. If it, to, if it starts to bounce around here, then maybe we could potentially be looking at um, uh, a breakdown or a stop hunt, uh, first of all, before a breakdown. Um, so with that being said, let's go on to the uh, dollar yen and the dollar yen. Um, from last week, prices did kind of sell off, but then we had some risk on sentiment come into the market um, from last week. Um, there was talk, obviously, of Trump and China, US and China, uh, you know, negotiating some sort of uh, meeting um, in the next coming, you know, month or so at the end of the month. So that kind of was uh, positive for um, the US and the, uh, the Japanese yen. It's a risk averse currency it strengthens it tends to strengthen in a risk off environment so you can see where basically the, the, the yen kind of weakened this week but we're up into this supply zone here so uh options are dollar yen uh what have we got we've got move that probably up to here yeah move it up to there um you probably got a short opportunity now if you think the dollar is going to get weaker and the yen is going to get stronger. If you're looking at any kind of uh, buy trades, I would probably say try to potentially buy at any levels of support within a, a, a wide area of demand, yeah, because that's where traders, other traders, are potentially going to be getting. And we know this is demand right here. And again, if we really wanted to, we could just basically put that. I would say probably around here, um, just to clear the chart up a little bit. But I'm gonna basically put it all the way down here this whole area is demand right um but again we, we kind of simplify that by doing things like horizontal support diagonal support as well so we can add a little trend line here to be higher highs higher lows but unfortunately this trend line doesn't come down into uh this demand and so we can't really use it um but i would probably say this uh this 105.2 level, if you really want to be a, a, a buyer um, of the dollar versus the yen. And right now, if you want to be a buyer of the yen over the dollar, um, looking at the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss this week did come up into this supply zone. Nice outside candle there, um, what I call a capture pain candle, and uh, did sell off, but dollar pretty much bounced back on no risk um, or risk uh, less risk off if you know what I mean so um, if we are looking at trades for the week dollar Swiss 
again, you really kind of have to understand the fundamentals of why you're buying um, one currency over another. It really isn't just good enough to look for technical patterns. In my opinion, if you can make technical patterns work um, without fundamentals and sentiment, then, um, you know, uh, great for you but I tend to choose my direction based off of fundamentals and sentiment so I'm always going to be a buyer of the uh, dollar over the Swiss franc you can see pretty much what happened last week prices came down into a level of demand that had also confluence of you know support there support there bit of resistance um, with that purple zone and you can see where it kind of had you know the buy trade so we don't we're not always chasing price we're trying to buy value and there was a decent trading opportunity right here for traders to get involved in that uh, long trade up to the uh, the highs if you're trading obviously intradays so we use daily supply and demand zones and look for intraday entries now if you're looking to be a buyer of the dollar you'd have to look for price to either come back down into this zone here or potentially um, somewhere around um, I would say this uh, this area probably around here if prices create some sort of higher, higher, higher low within this demand zone. But um, those are pretty much your buy options. If you're looking to sell right now, I'd probably say a fresher area, which is really up top above this um, 99 point, no, sorry, 0.992 level, anywhere above there and you're looking to short. And then again, that would be more based off of risk off sentiment as the Swiss franc uh, strength is in a risk off environment and the uh, US over the US dollar uh, looking at the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD this week um, we got a bit of a move up right that was a nice little stop hunt um, set up here uh, and then pretty much sold off right there down into this uh, demand zone here and that was also due to um, I think there was some ne um, not great news for the uh, US dollar this week obviously and there was more positive news for the CAD so you can see again the divergence in you know sentiment coming into this week's market if you wanted to be a buyer of the Canadian dollar but as we update the charts what you want to do is it's created lower highs lower lows that's a nice supply zone now um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that there and so what we want to do is probably look for potential buyers if you think if you think that the, that the dollar is a uh, bargain price potentially from here it was proven to be a bargain price right here and we know that for a fact because prices went higher here right so when prices come back into a demand zone we want to look for potential um, uh, areas of potential demand again so in value so I would say probably this area right here is a nice area to look for potential long trades so anywhere from now a bit lower around it's 1.3150 1 level be a decent buy and if you're looking to sell then you're looking at price come back up to here before looking at short trades there or there um, and now looking at New Zealand dollar US dollar and New Zealand dollar rallied on a bit of uh, US dollar weakness into this week. So it again came down into this longer term demand zone right from way back when. Don't think the price, um, we go back there on the replay, but you can see pretty much what's happened. Nice outside candle there, capture pain candle. Um, and prices have gone on its way. Um, so let's look at the an update of the chart so we can kind of delete some of these zones because you come back up into that level of supply and we're bouncing off of it right here so again if you think this is a bargain price for the uh, US dollar then you'd be getting short right now looking for short trades down at the lows remember we've had this you know it's pretty much downtrend for ages so if you are a trend trader then you're looking for a pullback into an area before looking at getting short and then um, and anywhere you know obviously because this level might not work out prices may come higher before looking at short trades um, if you're looking at uh, long trades then you'd be looking at again price to come all the way down here before looking at a long trade anywhere around here and what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to I'll keep that long term one, but I'm gonna keep this there. There's another hidden demand zone right around there. So anywhere around here before looking at um, any kind of demand trades, buy trades around here as the market has proven that there's demand here. Nice hard in, hard out movement. Moving on to the pound dollar. The pound dollar um, this week has been a wild ride, a bit of a wild ride with the pound uh, dollar and sentiment. So we did have bit of a sell-off and all of a sudden prices have reversed back up into this area here so this uh, lower demand ended up holding yeah you see a spike through um a nice capture pain uh setup right here prices do come down here to the upside if you want to buy the, the pound and then again based off of pound sentiment and that was really based off of the um the fact that there was the possibility of a uh, a deal Brexit being um, on the cards, right? And the chance of that increasing. Hence, you've got this massive sentiment rally. So um, looking at the chart, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete that. I'll delete that and um, I'll delete some of these and uh, just readjust potentially where these demand zones are. All right, so that's a demand zone there. I'm gonna um, get rid of this, this this supply zone anyway, delete it that was there. If we do get price come down and start to make lower lows, lower highs, then that would create a supply zone this week. But for now, we don't know whether that is a strong area of supply at all. Prices are pretty much, you know, kind of broken through that level. So, um, for those who do know about stop hunts, this could be a potential stop hunt to the downside as well. So, um, you know, there's there's definitely still an option there. Um, but from a supply and demand zone perspective, um, there's really no uh, supply zone, major supply zone, unless price proves that there is supply there. Yeah. So I'm going to leave it as it is, which means that you're probably looking for either again price to create that supply zone there or for price to rally up to this area before looking at getting short and buying the US dollar right so those are your um, your options for this week uh, euro dollar euro dollar so again um, prices sold off and pulled back and then we're potentially selling off so um, came up back up into this uh, supply zone. So, you know, there could be another sell-off and especially um, with the ECB announcing stimulus this week. And if they do surprise the market, um, and I'm talking about surprise the market in a uh, in a negative way, um, you could probably see, you know, this start to sell off. Germany's going into potential recession. Um, you know, the whole Brexit um, saga, you know, it, which also affects Europe as well because a no deal Brexit will definitely affect Europe. So um, it's not looking too, too, too good for Europe. It's worse for Europe than it is for the US dollar. And even though the, the, sometimes the focus is on the US um, and uh, Donald Trump, the, believe me, the uh, US is in, a, I mean, sorry, the Euro is in a much worse position. So Euro, um, again, just looking for short trades, really. If you didn't take any short trades right here, yeah um then you're probably waiting for potentially this week what could happen is you know prices to kind of move up into further into the zone before looking at a short trade um if you're looking if you are looking at you know demand there is a bit of a demand zone here but i think this is probably more profit taking before the um the move on thursday so um again it could go either way um if the stimulus isn't uh, announced or they you know hold stimulus <clears throat> then um, chances of, of the euro rallying are very very high but um, again with the probabilities is really just on the side of um, the European Central Bank um, basically increasing stimulus because they're trying to potentially hold off from Germany going into a recession they need to kind of boost their economy so um, we'll see but 
again trading is a probabilities game it's, there's no certainties in in forex trading we just trade the probabilities and then um, uh, manage our risk so you are buying you're looking at a basic pullback back into this um, demand zone here before buying the euro if you are looking to short the euro if you didn't get in here you're probably looking for some sort of pullback into this zone or higher before looking at getting short moving on to the euro yen and the euro yen this week euro has rallied a little bit um back up into this again this uh, supply zone where you've got support bit of support bit of resistance you can see where it's stalled around there so let's look at updating these charts and euro yen there was again risk off so less risk off or a bit bit more risk on coming into the market and you pretty much got that what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete that and create a new demand zone right here because there is demand there nice demand zone matter of fact but why would you want to be buying the euro um, when there's a lot of risks um going on at the moment <clears throat> you know you're probably better off and again not financial advice but you're probably better off um buying the uh, yen in a risk off environment especially you know with the risks that are going on um you know in europe so uh short trades now or looking for pullbacks up into probably this one two zero higher level where there is a bit of if you want to look at as maybe some sort of support and resistance zone let's look back a little bit further actually nothing really uh, nothing significant a little bit but not for a while but i would probably maybe to drag that down maybe a bit lower right here so you've got resistance here resistance here so potentially resistance within this larger supply value zone um, if you're looking to get short and again your long trades will be looking at demand zone price to come back and then look for demand around there um aussie dollar finally uh has did bounce off this area here presented a nice bullish uh outside candle capture pain candle the prices have actually gone through that supply zone now so decent buying opportunity if you thought that the australian dollar was gonna you know uh get a bit stronger it was bound to happen at some point you had you know this whole you know weeks of um of a, of a downtrend in market then you have you know basically a ranging market and then you're looking for at least some sort of breakout at some point when you have a few weeks of you know a range just like you had a few weeks of a trend trend range and potential trend but this also could be a bit of a fake out as well so um again to the guys that know about stop hunts um we'll uh, discuss this a bit later in the uh you know the the, the telegram group area but let's go to the charts and look at Aussie dollar. So I'm going to say that, that supply zone has gone. I'm also going to readjust this demand zone right here. And I'll leave it at around the lows. Um, so what you're now looking at is a potential. If you're looking at shorts, then you have to again wait for lower highs, lower lows before prices come back to either one of these. Uh, levels here either that lower high or that high right there if you want to be a buyer then you're looking at that right there but again we've touched this level once twice so a third time uh, is um, is not necessarily the greatest so what you again you'd be looking for is some sort of uh, potential stop hunt around the lows so um, yeah uh, that's pretty much it for now or if prices rally all the way up here that's where your next short is finally we've got the Australian dollar Japanese yen and here we go again we had a bit of risk uh, on coming to the market and then we've had this rally as the Aussie dollar um, so yeah the Australian dollar will rally in a risk on environment and the Japanese yen will um, tend to weaken so again looking at the Aussie yen 
this is pretty much what's happened I'm gonna move this demand zone really up here get rid of this supply zone and uh, can get rid of that now and again similar to the Aussie dollar you're waiting for me maybe I could pull back here if you're looking for any kind of sell trades you'd really have to look for lower highs lower lows then a pullback and then a move uh, to the downside or price is really to kind of rally up here yeah so there's a few options again like I said something like that then a pullback into a supply zone lower highs lower lows uh, and then that would be your supply zone so um, that's it for this week guys uh, I hope you enjoyed the analysis if you have any uh, comments um, definitely uh, comment in the section box below for those guys who have commented and asked questions apologies this week has been very very hectic or say last week has been very hectic and I will try and get back to you as soon as possible don't forget to like subscribe share um, and also for those who have signed up to the course don't forget you have the members uh, analysis which is the analysis in-depth analysis on 25 currency pairs and that is in the room now um, with obviously uh, the capture pain um, uh, uh, setups as well so guys take care and I will speak to you all soon have a great trading week